I want a garden. You want a garden. And many gardeners start with the idea, I'm going to build a garden. But what does that really mean? And how do we reach the point where we've built a garden? Well, it all begins with your plan. And a plan requires goals. Join me today as I share with you some thoughts on how to set gardening goals. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I think goals are a necessary part of garden planning. The question becomes, are our goals adequate for the gardening success that we're hoping to attain? I'll ask someone what their goal is in the garden, and I might get an answer like, I want to grow food for my family. Well, yes, that's a goal, but is it really enough? At the end of the season, if that person grows a single carrot and produces it for their family dinner, did they achieve their goal? Well, yeah, they grew food for their family. But was that what they were really trying to do? That's where understanding how to make the appropriate goals makes a difference when we're looking at gardening success. When it comes to making goals, I like to follow the SMART approach. Goals should be specific. They should be measurable. They should be attainable. They should be realistic. And they should be time-bound. I think the process of creating a good goal begins by asking ourselves a question like, why? Why are we setting the goal in the first place? And so beginning with the idea that I want to grow food for my family, that's a good idea. But let's dig deeper and continue to ask questions of ourselves. Why do you want to grow food for your family? Oh, because I don't want to be reliant on the supermarket. Dig deeper. Why don't you want to be reliant on the supermarket? Well, because I'm concerned about the pesticides on the vegetables, and so I don't want my family eating those pesticides. And you can ask different questions like, well, how will gardening help you with that? Well, it's because I have control over the pesticides or the lack of pesticides that go on my food crops. And as you keep asking those questions, that helps get you to the point where you can begin to define that specific goal that you're after. And ultimately, we get to a very important question that can really help us define a goal. What will success look like? if we achieve our goal. And this is where the SMART process really comes into play to help us define a clear and good goal for our garden. We might realize that when we're growing food for our family, what we really want is to grow a very specific crop and a very specific amount. So the goal might be, I want to grow 20 pounds of beets to supplement my diet, or I want to grow a bed with 0% pesticides. Well, looking at SMART, those are very specific goals, and they're definitely measurable. You can measure 20 pounds, and you can measure 0%. We start getting into whether it's attainable and realistic and time-bound when we decide how we're going to approach our gardening. And this is where setting goals for your gardening will differ based on your own experiences and your own individual garden. I already have beds set up ready to go. So could I put beets in this bed and grow 20 pounds? Yes, I could. It's attainable. But if you don't have the beds ready to go, if you're new to gardening, well, you may need to start developing another goal. I need to build a bed that can grow 20 pounds of beets. That's a good start. Is it realistic? Well, I've grown beets before. Could I grow 20 pounds of beets in a single season? Yes, I could, because I have the experience. If you don't have the experience, setting that goal is a good start. But at the end of the season, you may realize that it isn't realistic in your climate or with your experience. That's not necessarily a failure. You've just identified that next year, if you make a goal that has to deal with beets, 
it's one of those things that you might need to modify the specifics of the goal. And almost all of the goals we make in our garden are affected by time. In this case, I can't start beets right now because my beds are frozen and they're covered with snow. So it's more than just, I want to grow 20 pounds of beets in a bed. I need to bring this time factor in. I need to match it to my climate and match it to my garden. And so for me, the specific part of the goal might be to plant the seeds as soon as the soil thaws out and warms to the point that I can expect the beet seeds to germinate. This is how I approach my gardening goal setting every year when it comes to determining what plants I'm going to put in my garden beds and which tasks I'm going to undertake in the garden. I look at these as short-term goals. These are the kind of goals that are going to begin and end usually within the same gardening season. I think it's also important to set long-term goals. I moved into this house a little over three years ago and everything behind me, to my side, all of this space was empty just over three years ago. And all of these projects have come about because of very specific goals I set along the way. When I moved in, I started a five-year plan that consisted of many, many short-term and long-term goals. The first thing I did when I started on that five-year plan was to set the first project, and this is it. I wanted to build two wooden raised beds with a cattle panel arch between them. That was the basic idea. Well, the goal was further defined to have four by four wood to make up the beds, to have the beds about 18 inches high and 10 feet long, and the arch in between is actually two cattle panel arches. This individual project I have in an earlier video to show exactly how I did it. Well, to make that video, I had to cover all of those specific parts of the SMART process, and this began my five-year plan. My plan, as I laid it out, called for me to build a greenhouse that could withstand the extensive winds we get here in Colorado, that could handle the cold and the heavy snow that we often get, and to put it in place in year three of my five-year plan. By having the specifics and a goal like that, it happened. A big reason why projects like those happened is because I wrote it down. That's another critical part when setting your goals. You need to tell somebody. You need to tell yourself exactly what it's going to be by putting it on a spreadsheet or just writing it on paper. I did that with a plan on paper that clearly identified all of the respective projects that needed to take place. like putting in six wooden raised beds to grow vegetables in in that first year and building these steel raised beds for peppers and tomatoes in year two. By writing it down and making sure that it's something that you can accomplish, you can cover all aspects of the SMART process. Make sure that the goal is good and you decide when it actually goes into your garden. As you do more and more gardening, or even as you begin gardening, by asking yourself some of those hard questions, you can begin to realize the importance of goals. I mean, often, just because gardening can be so extensive and can also become difficult, it might require that we learn more about the subject that we're making the goal about. I wanted to be an organic gardener. Well, I wasn't even really sure what that meant when I first had that thought, so I had to study. I had to learn what it really meant to be an organic gardener. And that led to me learning more and more about soil and making some very specific goals about building and improving the soil within my beds. That led me to compost and building the compost bins and how I was going to choose to compost. It led me to learning more about 
fertilizers and pesticides and deciding how I was going to use those specifically in my garden. And in my case, it's not using those in my garden. That's how I've defined organic gardening. And that's one of the goals I have is to not use any pesticides or any fertilizers if I can avoid it. Setting good goals that will help you define how successful your garden was in any particular season does take some effort. There's work involved. I suggest doing it at a time like this when maybe you've got snow on your beds or maybe it's just an exceptionally rainy day and you can't be outside. You can still garden inside by setting the goals for the gardening season or for next year's season or for a five year set of seasons. You have complete control over your goal setting. No one else needs to be involved. You decide what your goals are and how you're going to measure them and attain them if they're realistic for you and what the time frame happens to be. And don't feel like you are tied in to the goal that you make. You can modify it over time. As you're working on that project or growing that plant or whatever the activity is in your garden based on a goal, if you find out that it's not working as you expected, go ahead and modify it change the M, measure it differently, or you realize that it might not be realistic or attainable in the manner that you thought it would be, it's okay to change it. It's just a guideline to get you moving in the direction toward gardening success. So that, like I've found over the years, you can have the garden that you want and garden the way that you want. To get there, you just need to set some goals along the way. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>